Hi, this is Patricia McClure, and welcome to my vlog on digital colonialism. First, let's have a little refresher course on what colonialism is. It began in the 15th century when European economic expansion moved into markets outside of Europe. So imperialism controlled the flow of capital and kept the markets and capital investments securely in European hands. In current times, globalization is another word for imperialism. All of this began in 1492 with Christopher Columbus. Let's look at this ideology from the lenses of the United States. We learned about imperialism and colonialism under a very benign term known as manifest destiny. Colonial impact includes environmental degradation, the spread of disease, economic instability, ethnic rivalries, and human rights violations. Colonial education forced the colonized to conform to cultures and traditions of the colonizers, and it stripped the colonized people away from their indigenous learning structures and drew them into the structures of the colonizers. Digital or electronic colonialism explains how mass media is leading to a new concept of empire. It will not be one based on military power or land acquisition, but one based on controlling the mind. It is a psychological or mental empire. It is an evolving global empire of the mind. Since the dawn of the internet, the World Wide Web has been controlled by the U.S. government. ICANN, or the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, is a global multi-state organization that was created by the U.S. government and is currently under contract with the Department of Commerce. Media imperialism uh, consists of the U.S. and the Western Europe producing most of the media products. Electronic colonialism is about influencing behaviors, attitudes, desires, beliefs, and lifestyles. It seeks to displace, reject, and forget cultural traditions, norms, and history. Facebook colonialism was coined in 2016 whenever it was acting like a colonizer by going into India, writing in like it was a savior, banding about words like equality and democracy, and it masked um, its long-term profit motive. It justified that their approach to free internet was better than nothing. They partnered with local elites, and then they accused their critics of ingratitude. So as it continues, tech companies continue to provide free services in exchange for the right to collect and commoditize our data. There is a lot of money to be uh, had in um, marketing data, using data. You can sell it to customers. You can use it to empower Salesforce, use it in marketing and advertising. You sell it to players up and down the industry value chain, uh, sell it to players outside the industry. And it is also used to increase the company's value like with Facebook. So data is the currency of modern business. Extracting value from the data is kind of like, well, it's mining for gold in a lot of ways. It's a precious commodity. Uh, interesting factoid, 90% of the world's data was created during the past two years. So here's an interesting little thing about digital and how to resist digital colonialism. So let's take a look at that. So uh, looking at ways to de decolonize the internet, decolonize our minds, it's like changing our thinking patterns to be more critical thinkers. There was a decolonizing the internet conference in 2018 in Cape Town, South Africa. They're beginning the conversation on how to go about decolonizing the mind and the internet. So uh, some of these things is, is really just starting with the, having a conversation about the colonization of the mind, colonization of the internet, and ways to, um, to combat it. So thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Take care.